What is it? What? I don't, I can't hear you. What, what is it? Oh, wow. What, you did not have any time to savor that. Here you go. It's already gone again. Listen, I know you didn't chew that. Can, I can't, you ate them all so quickly. Fancy, milky, so high. I'm here with my wine glass of milk and you know what that means. So I'm kind of back. Welcome to uh, the, the ensuing chaos that is another video from yours truly. I am very professional today. You might be wondering why I dress so fancy and why I'm drinking milk. And the reason for that today is we have a sponsor. Not really. I don't know what to call them other than that. So a couple of weeks ago, Gaumon Tablets reached out to me and they were like, hi there, can you review our tablet? And I was like, sure, why not? So here it is. They sent me a tablet. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be doing a tablet tablet review and I'm also going to be drawing Shira because I feel like it. Galmon didn't pay me any money to do this. They just sent me a free tablet, which was super nice of them. I love that. But anything I say in this video, I'm saying it because I felt like it. So after using this tablet for a couple illustrations, I'd say I think it's pretty good. Uh, I think would I have kids, I think I'll let them use this tablet. I think this tablet is I think it's pretty cool. Okay, this is dumb, but I somehow neglected to mention that I'm actually going to be giving this tablet away to a subscriber. So watch till the end of the video or check the description for details on that. Cool. Buckle up your seatbelts, pour yourself a tall glass of milk. Does everyone have their milk? Excellent. Let's begin. is the Gaomon 106K battery-free pen tablet. Already this packaging is looking sleek and nice, as you can see from my little montage. When you flip over this beautiful tablet box, you'll find some lovely features listed on the back, such as Create Par Excellence, Classic, Intelligent, Ultra Thin, Simple, High Quality and High Grade, Personality, Humanity, Creative Entertainment, now, with descriptions like these, you might be thinking that you're actually purchasing your own personal robot that does all your chores for you and complements your hair. And you'd be absolutely correct. With 8,192 levels of pen pressure sensitivity and a battery-free pen, this baby is definitely the most advanced piece of technology I've ever seen. But all jokes aside, the quality of this pen tablet is wonderful. And it only gets better when you unbox this bad boy. You gotta live dangerously sometimes. And let me see what you have! No! Included with this tablet is the pen tablet, the battery free pen, the pen nibs and clip, the pen case, the felt pouch for nibs, the USB cable, and the quick start guide. Man, I sound like a dog show announcer right now. I am so sorry for that. The Golden Retriever, the Labrador Retriever, the Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever. And here's the part where I didn't realize that this tablet is actually compatible with Android phones. Okay, I did not know you could, I don't, I've never heard of something like this. Which is actually extremely dope because I didn't realize that technology existed until I began filming this video. Also, did I mention that when you purchase this tablet from the Amazon listing in the description below, you actually get a free gift of either a tablet glove or eight free nibs. I think it's eight free nibs. I don't know. I didn't check the information. This tablet definitely seems like it can give other similar tablets a run for their money, and it's just under $65. <laughs> it's a pretty great deal. So now that we know the basics of this baby, let's get on to the setup. I connected the tablet side of the USB cord to my tablet and the other side to the USB port on my laptop. Immediately, the driver software began to install. And within a few seconds, my tablet was connected to my laptop and I could use the pen to move my cursor around. 
but we're not quite done yet. Next, we have to install the tablet driver. To do that, we type the link listed on the insert into our browser and follow it to Gaumont's website. Choose the driver for your operating system, mine is a Windows 10 64-bit, and select the download button. This will download a zip file which you'll need to extract. For this, I use a service called WinRAR and it's free to download. Simply drag and drop your downloaded zip file into WinRAR, select the file, and hit extract. Next, simply select the driver installation file and follow the steps to install. This shouldn't take long. Once you've finished the installation, you'll need to restart your computer. Next, you'll need to adjust your tablet settings to begin painting. You can do this from the Galmon tablet menu. You can adjust your working area, add shortcut keys, and adjust pen pressure sensitivity here. After you get your settings the way you like them, you're ready to begin painting. As soon as I opened Clip Studio Paint, all my pen pressure and shortcut keys were already working the way I liked. So since I now use a display tablet, and it's been a while since I used a graphics tablet, I decided to start sketching around a bit to get used to how it feels again, and to test out the pen pressure settings of this tablet. To prepare me for the full piece I'm going to be doing later in this video, I decided to draw Adora and Catra as a warm-up. Alright, so I'm not going to do a full illustration with the phone because I don't really have time this week, but I'll show you guys the setup. There's a meow present for this demonstration. No, no. There will be an adapter for an Android phone included in the package. And from there, all you'll need to do is attach the USB to the end of the adapter and then just attach the other end to your phone. You're going to want to have your phone parallel to the tablet when you're using it. And for the compatible Android phones, as soon as you plug in the tablet, it should begin working automatically. From there, you can use whatever painting software you like. I'll put the one I'm using here up on the screen. And you'll have a specific area on the tablet that you can draw on the phone with. I definitely see people creating some good work with this particular painting software using a graphics tablet. So I feel like this would be really great for anyone who doesn't have a laptop or PC, but still wants to draw digitally. So far, I really like the pen pressure settings. It was really fun to do some painting work on this tablet. Now that setup is complete, let's get into the main task of creating a full illustration. Okay, so I am now at my little improvised workspace and we are ready to begin working on the illustration. So as I've mentioned in past videos, before working on a big illustration like this, I like to thumbnail first. So I have a couple pages of thumbnails that I've come up with to try to just get a basic composition for this. I don't want it to be too complicated, but I've settled on this one here. So I now have this set up on a document on my computer and I am ready to begin painting. As you can probably see, I totally moved away from the first idea in the thumbnail and the final sketch ended up looking totally different. That's okay though. Sometimes you have to experiment a bit before landing on a final idea for an illustration. This will definitely help you to move away from more generic ideas and find the best possible concept. As I said earlier, right now I'm used to using a display tablet, which allows you to use a pen directly on the screen. So it took me a little time to get used to using a graphics tablet again. But since I used a Wacom Bamboo for seven-ish years, after a few hours of recalibrating my brain, I got pretty used to the feel of the graphics tablet again, and my workflow was pretty efficient. So it looks like we have a pretty good sketch going on here. So the next step, since I'm going to be painting this piece actually, is going to be to just start roughing in some flat color. Since again, I'm not really used to the pen pressure anymore, I decided to go with my painterly style instead of my line art style. I'm really glad I went with this option actually because I've needed practice painting and this was really fun since I love painting pretty cloud backgrounds. The sketch I came up with was pretty messy and off before I began cleaning it up. I will say sketching and coming up with a nice sketch was kind of difficult with this tablet, but I would mostly attribute that to trial and error and me not being used to it, but do keep that in mind. When I eventually got to the stage of cleaning up the sketch, this tablet worked really well. Painting was really smooth, and I really liked how it felt with the watercolor brushes in Clip Studio. So next, we're going to talk about some of the things I really liked about this tablet, and then some things that could use improvement. Overall, I really enjoyed using it. It had nice pen pressure, the driver installation was pretty simple, and it worked just great for my painting workflow. I also really like how many shortcut keys it has. Those really come in handy for me and anyone who has to change tools a lot. 
And when I had my bamboo, it only had two shortcut keys. So I definitely like that companies have recognized how useful they are and have integrated more shortcuts into their designs. This tablet also has a light that indicates that it's on, which is not a big deal, but it's also just kind of nice to have. And finally, I also really like the sleek design. The solid black color is really nice. So now I'm going to talk about a few minor cons of this tablet. I don't have a lot of negative things to say about this tablet, but there's still a couple of issues here. First of all, Galmon's tablet drivers don't play well with others. This definitely isn't a flaw unique to Galmon though. Most tablet drivers from different companies don't work properly together when they're installed on the same PC, so do be aware of that if you're using more than one tablet. This also may seem surprising, but this tablet is maybe a bit too big. The size looks really nice, but in my experience, I like it when a graphics tablet isn't too big and you can move your arm and wrist across it easily. My bamboo was maybe three quarters the size of this tablet, and that size was really comfortable to work with. This works just fine, but the size definitely took some getting used to. And lastly, this is a minor issue that is pretty specific to my phone, but the on-the-go software that allows the tablet to function with Android phones doesn't appear to work with Google Pixels, at least not a Google Pixel 1. Again, you have to own a Pixel for this to be an issue for you, but since my phone runs on Android, I figured it would be compatible, but I just couldn't figure out a way for it to work. So before purchasing this tablet to use with your phone, make sure it's definitely compatible. So let's talk a bit about my painting process. So I feel like some people think lineless or painterly art styles are harder than line art styles for whatever reason, and even though I am a bit new to drawing like this, I'm here to tell you that they aren't. They do take a bit more time, but it's definitely an attainable style that anyone can draw in. Just remember, you need good drawing foundations to be able to paint well. But from there, it's mostly having a decent understanding of color and value, and knowing where to use hard and soft edges. So when I begin working on a painting like this, I usually block in flat color underneath my sketch layer and then set my sketch layer to multiply. From there, I usually block in flat colors for the background and then get light sources figured out. Sometimes this means painting most or all of the background first. This just helps to ground the subject matter in the background and helps you to have a unified color palette. Once the background is blocked in, I usually begin roughing in some lighting and shading on the figure so the colors I begin painting with are accurate to the lighting around the character. Once I have a decent idea of the colors I'll be using, I usually lower the opacity of the sketch layer and make sure the blocks of flat color have good shape. Now it's time to begin getting into some of the details. On this piece, I begin with the face because I really didn't like the face I drew for the sketch. Feel free to always use reference for anatomy and faces. If the reference you need doesn't have similar lighting to the lighting in your piece, look for a lighting reference. The key to painting faces is to really just do a lot of studies and paint a lot of faces. Once you have a good understanding of facial anatomy and the forms, you can begin implementing some style. Okay, so here on out, it's a lot of rendering and correcting, which is largely stylistic. I have to flip the canvas a lot to see some of the wonky shapes and anatomy mistakes I was making, so remember to flip your canvas often and correct mistakes when you see them. In my personal workflow, working in little sections or areas of the body usually helps me to get an illustration like this done pretty quickly without getting too overwhelmed. It's a good idea to not be too zoomed in when you're trying to define basic shadows and forms so you can see how it affects the flow of the whole piece. Then once everything is blocked in and the color is looking right, you can begin painting in more rendering and detail in the focal points of the piece. Focal points are essential to making a painting look right. I see a lot of beginner painters try to completely render out in detail every aspect of a painting. This may seem like a good idea in theory, but in practice, it muddies up the piece and your eyes have nowhere to rest or focus. This is why I don't have as much detail on, say, her boot at the bottom of the piece as I do on her face, because we want the viewer to look at her face. As long as less detailed areas have good shape and hard and soft edges are in the right places, things will begin to look right even if it's not as detailed. Think about how eyes perceive a subject. If you're looking at someone's face, you aren't really focused on all of the details on their shoes or their jacket. You can only see impressions and general shapes. Remembering this can actually make an illustration look more pleasing. Moving along, I also usually get to a point in an illustration where it's almost done, but not quite, and I don't know exactly what I need to do to finish it up. At this point, I recommend just stepping away for a few hours and coming back to your piece with fresh eyes. Odds are, you'll be able to spot some areas of your piece that need improvement, or you can brainstorm some ideas for the piece while you're taking a break. When I took a break from this piece, I really thought I'd be adding some cute small magical creatures around her or some light beams. 
but ultimately I mainly just added some pink and peach tones to the clouds to tie her clothing in with the background and polished up the rendering a bit. Oh, and of course I added some sparkles. I'm definitely really happy with how this illustration came out, and I'm really excited to see what the giveaway winner draws using this tablet. Here is the finished piece, and just for kicks I also added a glowing she version. Hello again! Did you guys enjoy yourselves? Did you have fun? Did you finish your milk? I certainly hope so. Huge thanks to Galmon for sending me this tablet to review. I had a lot of fun creating illustration with this and using a graphics tablet again. It's definitely been a couple years. If you think this tablet would be a good fit for you, you can purchase it by following the Amazon link in the description down below. When you do that, you'll get a nice free gift and a wonderful affordable pen tablet. But if that doesn't work for you, I have another way that you can get this wonderful tablet absolutely free. So this is the part that some of you might probably be waiting for, and that's the giveaway. So free things are pretty cool, right? I think so. So this is partially just a sort of a thank you for all of the growth and support I've had recently. I just wanted to do something that would give someone in my audience an opportunity to have a nice tablet and maybe kickstart their digital art journey. If you're interested in this, this is what you got to do to enter. So along with the tablet, I'll also be sending whoever wins the giveaway, like two or three of my art prints of their choosing. I can also sign the tablet box if you want. I think that would be cool. Or the prints, I don't know. I'll ask the winner, recipient, whatever they want. So to enter this giveaway, all you have to do is follow the link in the description to the Instagram post where I'm hosting this. It will be the first link in the description. All you have to do to enter is follow my Instagram. You don't have to stay followed to me after the thing ends. I don't really care. Like the Instagram post so that it gets out there more for people to see the giveaway. And finally, to really solidify that you're entering, this is the thing that you absolutely have to do to enter. Just comment on the Instagram post the first thing that you would draw if you won this tablet. You can also share this around on your Instagram story or like wherever on social media if you want to, you don't have to. The winner will be randomly chosen from all of the entries that I have. You can only enter once, don't like add a bunch of comments that's just going to annoy me and make my job of choosing a winner harder. So yeah, only one entry per account. The giveaway begins whatever day this video goes up and it ends and the winner will be announced on September 1st, 2020. Uh, I'm so sorry if you don't have an Instagram, but if you don't, you can always make one just for this event. If you are very young or you don't have an Instagram, you can comment down below and let me know that if you still want to enter and I'll figure out some kind of arrangement for you to still enter the giveaway. If you are very young, if you're under 18, you don't feel comfortable entering this, you can have a parent enter for you or an older sibling, like that would be great. I encourage that if you're a little bit on the younger side. So I will cover all shipping costs for this. It's not gonna cost you anything to enter or anything like that. And I will be trying my absolute best to provide a tracking number. I do kind of have a limit on the shipping cost I can spend for budgetary reasons but uh, I will ship worldwide wherever you are. It just might affect whether or not you get a tracking number, but I will try my absolute best to ship with a tracking number. Or if, if you really want to, you could pay to have a tracking number added. I'm okay with that too. Good luck to everyone who enters the giveaway and thank you all so much for supporting me, especially the last couple of months. All the growth I've had has been really cool. Uh, it's been so much fun talking to you guys, so you want to talk to me down below it's always a fun time i enjoy that i encourage that so that's all from me now i hope you enjoyed the illustration of shira i thought it was a lot of fun to do i have intermediate college algebra to do but i don't know i think i'm probably just gonna go hang out with my cat so yeah thank you for liking commenting subscribing commenting down below and doing the things and supporting my work i am going to go have cat time okay drink your milk Someone likes it. Tiger, do you like it? As you can see, this product is also cat approved. I did not put her there. I don't want cat hair getting all over this tablet, but she just decided to sit herself down next to it. Are you happy? Do you like flat surfaces? Yes, you do. No comfy surfaces. Only flat surfaces. Oh, she trusts it.